Sometimes you want a lamp in a particular place and there are no outlets anywhere around. Years ago, I went online to try to buy a cordless lamp and I was shocked to discover that, first of all, there are not very many out there and second of all, they're insanely expensive. Like three to four hundred dollars for a standard table lamp. And what if you don't like the look of any of the available cordless lamps? Maybe you have a lamp you really like and you just want to use it. I couldn't believe somebody hasn't come up with a better solution for this problem yet. I have been researching and experimenting off and on for years and I have finally come up with three easy techniques that take less than five minutes each to transform any lamp into a cordless lamp. I also made a pair of really cool, soft, modern lamps from scratch, so make sure you watch towards the end of the video so you catch that tutorial as well. I'm gonna demonstrate using a pretty typical vase-shaped lamp. Odds are you have one at home, or if not, you could pick up something similar at a thrift shop. It's corded and it uses the standard two-prong American 110 voltage plug. It's just like the lamps you would find in any typical American home. The socket is a standard Edison style E26 base. This video is sponsored by DAP Products. One thing to keep in mind when you're picking out the lamp is to make sure that you have access to the bottom. Most commercially manufactured lamps are actually hollow and only have a piece of felt or foam on the underside which you can easily remove. The particular shape doesn't matter so much, but you'll have a much easier time converting your lamp if the opening is at least around three inches. In addition to the lamp, you will only need two products, a standard 110 volt AC powered light bulb and the star of the show, a 110 volt battery power bank with a built-in DC to AC inverter. By far the easiest cordless lamp conversion technique is to use one of these. It is a power bank with a built-in DC to AC converter. So you can go ahead and plug your standard 110 household outlets right into the end of it. It requires no modification to the lamp at all, other than opening up the bottom so it can fit inside. Although it's the simplest way to convert a lamp, it is my least favorite. It's got several drawbacks. First of all is the size. I mean, you can see this is the smallest one I could find and it's three inches by three inches by 10 inches tall. So you're gonna have to have a pretty good size lamp just to be able to get it up in there. Another drawback is the price. This is the cheapest one I could find. It is on the smaller side as far as battery life and it was around $100. So pretty big investment. The biggest negative about using a power bank with a built-in inverter is the noise. I'll go ahead and turn it on. You'll probably be able to pick it up on my microphone. You hear that? It has a fan on the bottom that spins the entire time it's on. This fan cannot be obstructed. Ideally, it needs to be exposed to open air. Otherwise, the entire power bank can overheat and fail. Something inconvenient with this specific power bank is the fact that the fan is opposite the plug and the power button. So if I inserted it into my lamp this way to make it easy to plug in and turn on, my fan's not gonna have good air circulation. It's stupid easy to use though, watch. Grab the plug of my standard existing 110 lamp, plug it in. You'll need to read the instructions of your specific power bank and watch the wattage on your light bulb. Even if it's 110, you're gonna have to keep your wattage pretty low. You're gonna probably want to use an LED light bulb, which uses less wattage, but has the same lumens as a standard incandescent bulb. Screw your bulb in and then turn it on. And then, you know, I can, Shove this up in there, tuck the cord in, got a cordless lamp, that's it. For the second technique, the materials you will need include a five volt DC powered light bulb, a rechargeable lithium ion battery pack with a USB outlet, and a USB powered five volt light bulb socket. This is the second easiest technique to make your standard corded lamp cordless. This is a pretty simple lithium ion rechargeable power bank. You can find them almost anywhere these days. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes and offer a huge range of milliamp hours. Basically, how much juice they have in them. This is the same kind of power bank you would use to charge your cell phone while you're traveling. This technique can be really great if you don't have a very large lamp. Maybe you have a really skinny lamp and the beauty of these power banks is they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Usually the smaller ones have less juice, 
So that might be a trade-off, but if you have a lamp that you really love, it's a way to make it work. The key to making this technique work is purchasing one of these special USB powered light sockets. They can be a little tricky to find, but not impossible. I got mine from an RV parts supplier. I'll leave a link in the description box so you can check it out. The beauty about a USB connection is it's already DC or direct current. So there's no need to convert AC in a standard American home into DC to be able to power the lamp. With this technique, you're not gonna be able to use your standard American 110 volt light bulbs. You're gonna have to read on your specific power bank and find out what type of voltage it will output. Odds are it's probably only gonna be five volts. You can find power banks that will put out higher voltage, usually nine volts and 12 volts. When I purchased this one on Amazon, it claimed that the USB-C port would output 12 volts, but I've never been able to get that to work. That means I am limited to one very, very specific light bulb that I can use. It is a five volt DC light bulb. They exist, but they're hard to find and they're expensive. This one little light bulb was I think 14 or $15. Also, it's not very bright. It's probably about the equivalent of only a 25 watt incandescent bulb. The big bummer, in addition to the very specific low powered light bulbs, is the fact that I have to use a whole new socket. So the existing socket on my lamp has to go completely. That's usually not a hard job, but depending on your lamp, it could be a chore. The USB end is not going to fit through the existing hole. So the only way that I could make this socket fit onto this lamp would be to actually disassemble it, disconnect the soldered wires, pull the whole thing apart, rewire it, and then put it back together. It's not a huge job, but it's just another step. Just for demonstration purposes, instead of taking apart the lamp to add the new socket, I'm just gonna show you right here how it works. My power bank specifically works better if I'm using USB-C. So I actually purchased this little USB to USB-C adapter. It just snaps onto the end like that. Then all I have to do is plug into my power bank, screw in my five volt light bulb, and then turn it on. It definitely works, you can see. Um, and for a lot of applications where you would just want some accent lighting, this is gonna be great. And the nice thing is these power banks are really inexpensive these days. This is a great option if you don't need a super bright light and you don't mind taking apart your existing lamp. For the third technique, the materials you will need include a 12 volt DC powered light bulb, a 12 volt DC battery bank with eight AA batteries, at least two wire nuts, electrical tape, and wire strippers. This third cordless lamp conversion technique is by far my favorite. It does require one very easy modification to your existing lamp. You have to cut off the pronged end of the cord. This technique requires some very, very basic wiring. Rewiring a lamp might sound intimidating, but I promise you it's actually very easy. I'll walk you through it. There's several things that I like about this technique. First of all is the battery bank itself. The ones that I bought, they hold eight AA batteries. I think they're around $6 each. Although that doesn't include the cost of the batteries themselves, AA batteries are easy to source anywhere. The AA battery bank is also on the smaller side. It's really flat, so it would easily fit in the base of most lamps. I also like the fact that you have a lot more options for light bulbs. This technique uses 12 volt light bulbs, which are much easier to source and a lot cheaper than five volt light bulbs. They also come in a huge range of wattages. Even though it might dramatically affect your battery life, you can go much, much brighter with your light bulbs. I also like the fact that it's just really, really simple. I don't have to mess with the socket. I can use the standard socket that came with my lamp and it's just DC power powering a DC light bulb. I don't have to convert the power and worry about energy loss and I don't have to worry about getting the right adapters and hopefully my voltages match. It's just very predictable and as long as you wire it properly, it's gonna work. This is the point where I am going to remind you that before you attempt any electrical work, make sure you speak with a licensed electrician, which I am not. After separating the two wires on the existing lamp and stripping the ends, the wiring process simply involves connecting one of the lamp wires to the positive lead of the battery bank and the other wire to the negative lead of the battery bank. 
Soldering the wires together and using heat shrink tubing would be your best option for making the connection if you have access to that equipment. Otherwise, wire nuts and electrical tape make a safe and removable way to connect the wires together. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just using eight standard AA batteries that you can find at the grocery store, the hardware store, pretty much anywhere. A better long-term solution would be to look online for rechargeable AA batteries with a longer milliamp hour rating. I'll leave a link in the description box for the particular batteries that I've been using. After I experimented with the three different techniques and decided the third one using the AA battery bank was the most practical, I wanted to create my own two custom cordless lamps for my living room. You can create a lamp out of almost anything. Usually the only parts that you need to fabricate would be the neck or stem of the lamp. I had a bit of half inch diameter steel conduit left over from building our house, which I cut down to one inch lengths, which I gave an upgrade using a coat of primer and two coats of paint. I provided links for all the products used in the video description, so make sure you check that out. For the bodies of my lamps, I decided to use these two large spherical lawn ornaments that I found at my local home decor store. They're designed to be weighed down by filling them with sand or gravel, so conveniently they have a large opening on the bottom which can be unscrewed. The first thing I needed to do to modify the spheres was to drill a half inch hole through the top. This hole will allow me to feed the wires from the inside of the lamp up through the neck. One half inch is the standard diameter of a brass lamp nipple. Yes, I know. It sounds funny, but the piece of hardware which connects the neck to the body of the lamp is called a nipple. In my experience, this connection tends to get loose over time, allowing the head of the lamp to wobble a little bit. So for these lamps, I decided to use removable Tank Bond Liquid Thread Locker by TAP. Tank Bond Thread Locker has an all-purpose gel formula which creates a strong, removable bond between fasteners. The gel consistency is easy to apply and helps avoid messes. It comes in both permanent and removable formulas. I chose to use the removable formula in case I ever want to swap out the lamp hardware down the road. Before I started assembly, there were two more pieces of standard lamp kit hardware that I wanted to modify slightly. A standard lamp hardware kit comes with a brass washer and brass nut, which are used to attach the nipple to the body of the lamp. I decided I wanted to join the two pieces together, so I pulled out one of my favorite products of all time, DAP Rapid Fuse All-Purpose Adhesive. If you go back and watch more of my videos, you'll see that I use DAP Rapid Fuse on the vast majority of my projects that I build. It sets in 30 seconds and fully cures in only 30 minutes. DAP recently came out with a new gel control applicator, which is perfect for precise applications like joining these small brass parts together. With all my components prepped, I began to add my lamp hardware to the lawn ornament bodies. When creating your own DIY lamp, you can purchase all your lamp hardware components separately, but I highly recommend purchasing an off-the-shelf lamp hardware kit. They're fairly inexpensive and they include everything you need, from wiring to the brass hardware to the light bulb socket and lamp harp. I purchased my lamp kits on Amazon and I included a link in the description box if you wanna check them out for yourself. When it came time to wire up the socket, I used what's called an underwriter's knot. An underwriter's knot loops the wires into a basic pretzel shape, which will protect the wire connections in case the cord ever gets pulled. The connection between the wires and the socket is made using conductive brass screws. Once my lamp hardware was assembled following the directions that came with the kit, I plugged my lamp into an outlet in the wall and screwed in a standard 110 light bulb just so I could verify that I had assembled my lamp correctly. Knowing that my lamp was wired properly, I could move on to making it cordless. I decided to use technique number three, the one that involves cutting off the prongs of the lamp and wiring it to a 12 volt AA battery bank. Even though this technique will require that I pull out the batteries periodically so I can recharge them, I still think this is the easiest, cheapest, and most practical way to get a cordless lamp. Just make sure you actually switch the battery bank on. When it came time to adding the lampshades, I noticed I had a small boo-boo to repair. This was a great chance to try out the new DAP Rapid Fuse Ultra Clear. Just like the rest of the Rapid Fuse products, it bonds virtually anything, including a fabric lampshade. The nice features of Rapid Fuse Ultra Clear are the fact that it dries perfectly crystal clear, making it almost impossible to detect once it's dry. And the fact that once it's fully cured, it stays flexible, so I won't have to worry about the bond becoming brittle or cracking over time. The last step in creating my custom lamps was to add a lamp harp and finally a shade. My 
cordless lamps function exactly like I hoped. Once the lamps were moved into place, I did a test run to check the battery life. Using rechargeable 2800 milliamp hour AA batteries, the lamps were still going strong with over 30 hours of runtime. That means with typical use, these lamps should last you at least one to two weeks before you need to recharge the batteries. If you want to know more about the modern custom home that my husband and I built, make sure you check out the full Building Modern on a Budget series. And if you like other types of DIY content, check out this video as well. As always, thanks for watching guys.